Hello, and welcome to the first in a series where we're going to explore creating digital assets within Houdini. Uh, in this photograph, uh, I've just simply pulled up a reference uh, for a photographer's psych, uh, and it's obviously in a photo studio. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building uh, basically a psych tool that will allow us to create this shape in a variety of ways, uh, round, uh, input curve, uh, straight, L bends, or whatever we want, and, uh, uh, and we'll be able to control it all procedurally. And then... Uh, uh, after that, then we'll add in some lighting that we can we can control through uh, an interface, which is all very easy to do in Houdini. Uh, basically, what I've got here is the default uh, interface setup. The only thing that I've done here is I've made sure that I've got create in context is checked. And uh, uh, so let's get started. For this initial portion, I think that it would be we don't need to have the grid on, and uh, having this floating gnomon might down there might get in the way. So we can hit the D key and uh, we uh, the origin gnomon rather, and we can just turn off that origin gnomon for for our needs right now. We'll come back and turn it back on later. So uh, with that, let's just hit Tab and G and bring up a geometry sop. Okay, let's just dive down into it and delete the file sop. And what we're going to first want to do is we're going to want to lay down a line, okay? And uh, th the line is going to be the foundation for building our procedural system in order to uh, come up with the shape of our psych. Uh, and uh, uh, the line can be used in a, in a variety of ways, which are which are very powerful. Some of them we'll get to uh, later when it comes into kind of building some procedural geometry, uh, and I go over uh, uh, some more complicated tool development. So with that said, I added in an edit there, so let me just delete that out. So what we've got is we've got our line is traveling uh, in Y up and it's traveling one unit. And we want it to travel on X, so I'm just going to put a one there, and I'm going to come, and I'm going to put a zero there. So now you can see that we have a line traveling one unit in X, and it's got two points, which that's great. So let's just rename this line to line underscore H, okay? Now I'm going to just copy and paste that. So I have another one, and I'm going to rename this one line V. Okay, and I'm going to put that one back to that. So we can see now that we have our r perfect right angle, which is what we need for our floor and our walls. Now, the one thing that we know is that we're going to want this line to always be in some sort of direct direct relationship to the very end of this line. And, you know, we're, we're going to want it to travel up so that we can get radiuses and stuff like that. But initially, uh, let's just get it over there. So that's very easy. So let's just add in a transform SOP. So we can just tab and type in, and there we go. It's a transform SOP. We'll append that. Now, what I want to do is very simple, is I'm going to set the distance parameter in the horizontal line by coming over here and going to copy parameter, coming back to this transform, and under the translate x, I'm just going to come here and simply paste copied relative reference. And you can see that our line has snapped into position. And then if I just type merge, and select that, that off that. You can see that we have our right angle. Now that we've created our system for creating our procedural right angle, let's begin to expand upon it and begin to build in our beveled radius. Okay, so now, but we're also going to want to be able to keep it at a hard 90 degree angle if we should want, just if you, just in case you want it, so why not? So in Houdini, that's very simple, so we're going to add in a switch node that at the end of this will allow us to pipe in that switch node into the merge and depending upon which one we choose will be which one we use. So with that what we're going to also want to do is come over here and append a transform. So we're going to come here from that transform to that transform and we're going to click on it and we're going to say for right now we're going to come back and make these numbers procedural but let's just make it travel and just to make matters easier let's watch what's going on here. I'm going to make it move one unit up and Y. Okay? And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to go copy parameter and I'm going to paste that into its X unit as well. So now what we have is we have an equal 
distribution of how that line is being transformed so that we can blend them together in order to get a bevel. One thing that I that I want to point out really quickly that I'm going to want to solve just for cleanliness sake and for just in case we ever want to pull anything from anything, you can see that with this line and this transform that, that though it's doing what we want, if you notice down here, this is the object's pivot point and it's not where it should be or where I would want it. It's not in the middle of the line, it's not anywhere near there. So let's just fix that and Houdini's got a great way of doing that. We can just type in dollar sign CEX and I'm going to come to Z first and I'll show you why. And you can see that it's already gone into the center of X there, which is fine. And we can say dollar sign CEZ, even though it's never moving in Z. And here, even though uh, uh, it's already there, I want to make sure that it always stays there. So I'm going to tape this one. I'm going to type in dollar sign Y min. And you and you could see that with Y min and Y, we could type in for instance, max, and you can see that the pivot point would always move up there. We don't want it there, but you could do it if you wanted to. So we're just going to keep it on min for now, right? So perfect. Okay, so now we want to create our bevel. So Houdini has a tool for that, and it's called join. Okay, so I'm going to just create some room here, and uh, it's just but so we can see, and I'm going to merge in into the join and we can see that it joins it and we can see that immediately we have a few problems and uh, I'm going to kind of go over and we're going to kind of look at those really quickly and then we're going to solve them okay so number one we can see that it's joining it doesn't look like anything it's behaving kind of weird now we can kind of get it more that's more along the lines of what we want there right I mean we could theoretically see how we could use that right and uh, it's got all these buttons connect closest ends in V and U and uh, but really with all the tweaking here none of them are really getting us to where we need uh, so with that we have to look at why and number one is that these are these are these are lines they're not really anything so the first thing that I think that we're gonna have to do is come over here and grab a convert SOP and we're gonna convert that from all type into a NURBS curve. Okay, so we've done that, right? Now you can see already that there's something that's a little bit different, right? We've got connect closest ends on, multiplicity, and blend off. And if we just pull that tolerance down to one, you can see now that we have a curve with a nice radius. And the radius will be defined procedurally. So that's pretty awesome. We're, 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 we're getting closer all the time. So now let's come back here. Okay, I'm just going to maximize this for a quick second. We don't have to always be looking at what's going on with Houdini and I'm going to organize my nodes a little bit. Okay, we've got our switch node here, right? Okay, which is cool. That's what we want to get here. And if you remember, we looked at the revolve, which is the first thing that we're going to look at here, right? And I'm going to add in some nulls here, and I'm going to call this one beveled uh, radius bevel. You can copy and paste it and just rename it, and I'm going to call this one right angle. Okay, I'm gonna. I want this one to be here, and I want this one to be here. So you can see what I've done. If we zoom out here, is I've cleaned up my nodes, and I've got the radius bevel, which is our system for joining the two lines to create the bevel going into a switch node as well as our initial right angle 
uh, 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 example. And I've got those coming into a switch node, and I'm going to pipe that switch node into this revolve, turn on the display flag, and let's go see what's going on. Okay, well, immediately you can see that we have a psych. And the psych is not exactly doing what we want. But that's okay. So let's see what's going on. Okay, well, one thing I can see that's a problem is that I didn't pipe the right thing into the right angle. So let's do that. Boom. So let's come back here into the revolve, and now you can see that at least we have a floor. Okay, so now let's come back to the switch node, and let's just change that to a 1. And that's perfect. And you can see that we have a radius psych. Now, it actually does have some problems going on with it. It's not it's not matching exactly to our line and, and we're going to solve all of these problems. But with that at least we've got somewhat of a system for beginning to make our psych and we can control for instance the height. We can control the width. The last thing that we're going to want to be able to do before we are able to collapse this into something that we can create a digital asset from and, and begin to uh, build the asset as we build the tool uh, in conjunction with one another is to define a curve that will be used for our custom shape. And that will be a curve that you, you know that we'll want in the future to be able to make another curve and, and be able to input. So we need to set that up first. So the first thing that we're going to come over here and do is we're going to um, turn back on the grid and this is home our view and, and zoom out a little tiny bit. Uh, now this curve is, is a meaningless curve. Uh, we just need it here. So I'm just going to come over here, type in tab curve, and I'm going to create a curve. And uh, I'm going to create a NURBS curve. And I'm just going to really, I don't really care. I'm just going to lay out some points for right now. Okay, That's all we need. And uh, with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to pull that up to here. I'm going to create a sweep node because that's going to be the node that we're going to eventually end up using. And uh, there's going to be a lot of problems with this, but we're going to fix those uh, later on. If we look at the sweep node, um, we can see that we have a backbone curve and a cross section. So for a cross section, let's just maximize this real quick and kind of zoom in so we can see what's going on here. Okay. So for our cross section, we're going to want to use the switch. And for our backbone, we're going to want to use that curve that we've just created. Okay. And you can see that it's copied our shape along that curve. Uh, a, a sweep node will give you normals. And you can kind of, sometimes you can call those normals for other uses. Uh, there's a lot of problems going on with that. Uh, uh, but we could say uh, 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 skin unclosed, for instance. And we can see that we're getting a shape. But really, that's all that we need for right now, even though it's obviously it's totally messed up. So with that, let's come back here and maximize this. Okay. I'm going to grab everything but that curve, okay, and I'm going to hit Shift C, and I'm going to collapse it into a subnet, right? And we're going to name this subnet Psych Tool V01, okay? With that subnet selected, I'm going to right-click it, right? And I'm going to come up here to Create Digital Asset, and it's going to be called Jordan H Psych Tool 01. Psych tool V01. Minimum inputs is one. That's why we created that curve. And I'm going to hit accept. And I'll hit apply. So you can see that I've got one input for a curve, which that's awesome. That's what we want. Uh, everything else has disappeared. Now collapsed into this one subnet that is now a digital asset that we can double click on, dive back in, and make all of our changes to that we want.